Welcome everyone. Pat and I thank everyone for joining us today. We realize that this year has been especially difficult with the global pandemic, racial and civil unrest. We also realize that living in this virtual world can be mentally exhausting. And we are extremely grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with us this evening or afternoon for you West Coasters. And we saw, as we celebrate your generosity, commitment, and unwavering support of the National Academy of Engineering. In this year's adaptation of the Golden Bridge Society celebration, we would like to highlight one of the NAE's premier programs, Engineer Girl. The young women in this program have been such a bright light for us, and I, for one, am very hopeful for the future. Before we introduce that program, we will start with a series of videos to share why philanthropy at the NAE is so vital. Several of our donors have volunteered to, to share why they give to the NAE and also recognize and welcome new donors into our recognition societies. While we wish we could honor each new Giving Society member in person, we will have to wait until it's safe to do so, probably next year. This year, we have three new societies to recognize. The Lincoln Society, the Franklin Society, and the Curie Society. The Lincoln Society honors donors who have given $1 million or more. The Franklin Society honors donors who have given between $500,000 and $1 million. And the Curie Society honors donors who have given between $250,000 and $500,000. The NAE has the highest number of donors among the three academies in each of these new societies, with 14 in Lincoln, 15 in Franklin, and 23 in Curie, in addition to the Einstein, Golden Bridge, and Heritage Societies that most of you are already familiar with. I am so proud of our academy. Pat and I thank you for joining us and for your involvement and generous support of NAE. She and I propose a toast to all of you present and featured in the videos. Thank you for your philanthropy and your belief in the National Academy of Engineering. Please sit back and enjoy the 15 minute presentations and the rest of the program. I grew, grew up in um, mainland China uh, uh, during the, my uh, high school period. I was working in a rural field. I think what changes me is, is because of the education. Uh, really, this education gave me the, the let me explore the, the world uh, to fulfill my, my dreams. Uh, the way I try to now by donating the money back to NAE is to encourage next generation students for them to have the opportunity uh, to get their education and to broaden their vision and let them explore the world and let them become the next generation of the National Academy of Engineering. As a member of the Abraham Lincoln Society. I would like to thank the following donors for joining me as founding members. Norman Augustine, Craig and Barbara Barrett, Jordan and Rhoda Baruch, Stephen Bechto, Bernard Gordon, Irvin and June Jacobs, John McDonald, Gordon and Betty Moore, Peter O'Donnell, Robert and Marie Prisker, John and Jenny Swanson, Marcy and Jane Trusha.
mission of the National Academy of Engineering is very important for the health and well-being of the nation. And it provides a, a service in the way of uh, advice on engineering matters and a, a set of high standards that are uh, really important. Ever since its founding, I believe, the uh, Academy of Engineering has uh, as its main responsibility uh, been conducting studies uh, in aid of various branches of government. But it has always uh, felt the need to uh, have programs uh, that it itself uh, believes are important and that it itself uh, would fund, uh, quite apart from uh, using the, uh, the funds that come from, uh, from overhead. And I believe that by uh, building these giving societies, the National Academy will be greatly strengthened in its ability to carry out these important and independent studies. As a member of the Benjamin Franklin Society, I would like to thank the following members for also joining as founding members, Gordon and Sheridan Bell, Penny and Bill George, and the George Family Foundation, Cindy and Jung Kim, Dane and Mary Louise Miller, Sheila and Kumar Patel, Henry and Susan Samueli, Raymond Stata, Erna and Andrew Viterbi. So here's why I give to the National Academy of Engineering. I cannot individually solve or even work on these major problems facing the world, but I can make the Academy stronger. And I can make the Academy stronger by doing what I can do. That is, I can provide funding so that the Academy collectively, as a group of engineers, can attack these major problems in the world. Look, the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. This is one way you can have a purpose and serve the world is by helping to solve these huge problems that the world's facing today. It's the right thing to do. I do it because it's the right thing to do for my children, my grandchildren, and it gives me a great deal of satisfaction to know that I can influence future events for them. As a member of the Marie Curie Society, I would like to thank the following donors for joining me as founding members. John and Pat Anderson, George and Virginia Bugliarello, Lance and Susan Davis, John Halquist, John Hennessy, Chad and Ann Holliday, Anita Jones and William Wolf, Mary and Howard Carroll, Ken Cressa, Robin and Rose McGuire, Dan and Patsy Moat, Ann and Michael Ramage, Al and Joy Romig, Charles and Rebecca Best. I'm Fran Ligler, and I was elected to the NAE in 2005. And I'm George Ligler. I was somewhat a slow learner and was not elected until 2017. 
So we are ver both very inspired by the NAE's mission, which is to provide advice to the nation on issues related to engineering and technology. And we are very pleased to be part of contributing to accomplishing this mission. And being donors to the NAE makes us feel that we're part of something important. Given the people we have in the academy, we have tremendous uh, abilities to impact uh, our nation technologically and from an, you know, and from an engineering perspective uh, substantially. But we cannot do it without the resources to convene that talent. Yes, thank you to all of the donors who are helping the NAE utilize uh, its convening ability and the talents of its members to give the right advice. We'd like to thank the new members of the Einstein Society, starting with Cleopatra Caboose, Thomas Everhart, Jenny Wang, Michael and Diana Kane, Norman and Jane Lee, Stella and Steve Matson, Nirmala and Arag Yaswami, Paul Rush, Hemant and Sunuti Thapar, Kayleen Thomas. We live in interesting times. A lot of things are changing. And one of the things is the Black Lives Matter movement. I've seen as, as a representative, as being female, I've seen the uh, change in NAE as more and more women have gotten involved in the structure. And we need to do that for African Americans. When Elsa first came in, women were just starting to be present in the academy to have some power. And now the society has changed at last and black American, African Americans need to be included. And that we, this we see as a particular opportunity right now with their contributions, their point of view, their creativity. As a member of the Golden Bridge Society, we'd like to thank and welcome the following new donors to our family, some of whom I know personally. John Angus. Mark Bohr. Andre Broder. Stephen and Wilhelmina Jaffe. Leah Jamison. Christina Johnson. Rear Admiral Michael Johnson, USN retired. Eric and Karen Taylor. David Larbalastier. Robert Lowy. Jyoti and Abarajita Mazumder. Thomas Richardson. Thomas and Marianne Romesser. Catherine Sapon. Fred Schneider and Mimi Busan. Longqui Sun. Richard Truly. Mark and Mary Lou Zerbeck. privileged to be able to have been able to give since I was inducted in 1992 on a continual basis uh, over time uh, it's able to uh, increase my uh, contributions and uh, I did become a uh, uh, Einstein member and uh, just having that statue uh, is, is uh, in my living room at a main place is a continual reminder of what the NAE does it's all people and it's, you know, the people who have good ideas and there's a variety of ideas and the NAE has ability both from, for its members and also for non-members to be a great convener for solving uh, problems. 
This year with the COVID uh, uh, outbreak, uh, the uh, NAE initial, initiated a grand challenge call to action. Again, this was all sort of derivatives of this original grand challenge is for engineering. And the call to action um, really is uh, putting, letting engineering, um, uh, engineers, students, academia, industry, people come up with solutions that can be used for various aspects of uh, addressing the, the COVID-19, whether it be, uh, you know, how do you make some of the personal protective equipment faster? How do you make, um, what do you do about vaccines? It's the programs and the people, and you get involved in things that hopefully make a difference. One thing that I would really want to, you know, emphasize is to really thank all the members who have uh, contributed to the NAE uh, fund every year. And it's very important, no matter what you give, to, for a good participation rate. And then to thank my fellow Einstein members and loyalty members for, for the, you know, the continued contributions and also the generous contributions that people have made so that uh, the NAE can move forward on its mission. I remember when I was informed of being elected to membership in the National Academy of Engineering. I was serving at the time as the Associate Administrator for Aeronautics at NASA headquarters in Washington. From my humble be beginnings in public schools in Richmond, Virginia, I was actually in tears when I was informed uh, that I had been selected. Engineering, as practiced by the members of NAE, and has, has developed a foundation in which we challenge ourselves to make sure we understand the landscape, that our problem definition is correct. And when I'm in that, uh, that room, that situation where we are Moving forward with definition and solution, I'm always mindful of the privilege, really, afforded me by participating, by service, by giving to the National Academy of Engineering. To be a part of something where the outcome is for the common good. It's based on logic. It's based on rational processes. I don't know of another organization in the U.S that I would feel so strongly about within these dimensions. The NAE is unique in this regard and most deserving of whatever mega resources I may have. What an inspiration. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rod Kinebeski, Senior Director of Development at the NAE. I've been with the Academy for almost 12 years and have had the privilege of getting to know many of you and your families. Thank you for making the NAE a truly incredible organization. I wanna thank all of you, our donors and supporters, including the ones you just saw, for sharing your passion and reasons for supporting the NAE. Working with all of you to advance NAE's mission and to improve lives through engineering gives us great satisfaction and motivates us every day to do more. Tonight, we also want to shine a light on the impact your philanthropy and involvement have had on the NAE by highlighting one of our most successful programs, the Engineer Girl program. We are proud of the strides you have enabled us to make in inspiring more girls and young women to consider a future in engineering. I'm delighted to introduce Simla Raghavan, Senior Program Officer and Director of the Engineer Girl Program. Simla has a PhD in Biomedical Engineering from Hopkins and joined as a Merzine Fellow in 2007. 
She has poured her heart and soul into Growing Engineer Girl. She will share a bit more about this program. Simil, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Radka, uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me tonight, and thank you for supporting programs like Engineer Girl at the NAE. I'd like to especially thank Mr. John F. McDonnell, the A. James and Alice B. Clark Foundation, Chevron, the Keenan Institute for Engineering Technology and Science, and Oracle, all of whom pushed us to think bigger and provided extraordinary support to help pilot and launch the Engineer Girl Ambassadors Program. Engineer Girl attracts young girls to engineering at a time in their lives when they're making really important educational decisions that will ultimately impact their career options. The message that Engineer Girl communicates is that students who become engineers can make a difference in society and shape their world. Women engineers work every day to shape the future and make the world a better place, a cleaner and safer place. Tonight, we're going to share a special pre-recorded video that shows the impact that Engineer Girl has had on three young women. In addition, we'll hear from the Oracle Corporation, who'll share why they have been, why they have been supporting Engineer Girl for the last five years. And I look forward to answering any questions you have after the video. Please enjoy. Girl became part of my story. I submitted an essay examining the engineering process to their national contest with no expectations. Months later, I received an email that I won first place. The recognition from the National Academies filled me with confidence, drive, and broadened my world, but it was overshadowed by the extraordinary women that I met. They welcomed me into the world of engineering. Engineer Girl is a unique program of the National Academy of Engineering to call attention to the infinite opportunities for girls and women. Engineer Girl includes a resource website featuring over 400 women engineers who volunteer their time to share their expertise. The program includes an annual writing contest and the Ambassador Program, which supports high school girls making a difference in their communities through engineering. My initial idea was to have workshops weekly at an underprivileged town near me where I focused on hands-on activities. I was planning on creating a SWE Next chapter at my school called CVHS We Next and gather a bunch of high school students to create an after-school mentorship program with the local middle school girls. We were both selected as Engineer Girl Ambassadors. We met at the Society of Women's Engineer Conference and we immediately clicked and became really close friends after that. We were all ready to start our programs and then COVID-19 hit. Despite living in different states, we decided to combine our forces and ideas to create the Engineer Girl Steamers program. This five-week program gathered 13 students nationwide online using Zoom. We posted those lessons on Google Classrooms, and then we sent them into breakout rooms so that the Steamer girls could communicate with each other and give each other advice on their projects. We discussed the engineering design process, how to write a design brief, and how to write an experimental design diagram. And we also gave them suggestions on how to improve their project. The Steamer girls decided on their own projects based off of what they were passionate about. I was really impressed by Ella. Her project was creating a website that would highlight the impacts of bullying on people, give resources on how to prevent bullying. She coded her whole website using HTML and CSS from scratch. One of my favorite students were Jalen. She wanted to emphasize the importance of windmills in slowing down climate change. She created her own prototype of a windmill. She adjusted the blades at different angles to test which would produce faster rotation and a greater number of revolutions. Um, we compiled all of their work into this Engineer Girl Steamers magazine. Kelly and I were really impressed at their hard work and determination to finish this program. 
One thing that's really exciting about Kelly and Rachel's project is the emphasis on STEAM. Um, and we believe that these superstar ambassadors in the Engineer Girl program are helping to inspire the next generation of female technologists, engineers, and creative problem solvers. In electrical engineering, we learned that in order for a circuit to work, it must be complete. This is true in life as well. A complete professional life includes giving back. The women at Engineer Girl inspired and encouraged my journey into engineering. And now I want to do the same for others. Thank you so much to the donors who supported this program. It really impacted our lives and all of the Steamer Girls' lives. The Engineer Girl program has really created a safe haven for me to fully indulge in my passion for STEAM since the people within the program are just like my family. Thank you for supporting engineer girls like me. I am so proud of these girls and the way that they've adapted and redirected their programs this year to cope with our changing world. It is truly an honor to work with them. And now I would love to answer any questions you have about the program or where we're headed next. Thank you, Simmel. So at this time, we are gonna open um, our question and answer for anybody who has questions for Simmel. I'm gonna start off with asking a question. Simmel, one of the young women in the video mentioned that she met women engineers who welcomed her into the engineering world. Can you tell us about who those women are and how they are connected to the students who participate in the Engineering Girl program? Absolutely. Um, Engineer Girl includes a number of programs and the three most important are the website and the associated programming that goes into the website the Writing Contest, and the Engineer Girl Ambassadors Program. The website includes over 400 women engineers who volunteer their time to support young women. Um, and they create profiles and post them on the site. Uh, they answer questions for young women and other visitors to the site about their careers and about how they got to where they are. Um, and they, you know, the Writing Contest, is, some of these women will also score the writing contest and help with that there. And oftentimes they will engage in other volunteer activities to support young women in engineering. Wonderful. And my second question is, Simone, how do girls get selected to participate in the Engineering Girl Program? Yes. So. As far as the website is concerned, young women can always ask a question or participate in any of the online resources and uh, hands-on activities that we have posted. The writing contest is simply something that we have a application that goes up every year and young women and even young boys can enter the writing contest. We make a point of making sure that everyone who enters the writing contest gets a, um, personalized feedback from the judges on their whatever they write so that they are able to grow even if they aren't winners. Um, the writing contest usually has an online form and so girls can participate by having their parents fill out that form and submit their writing sample. The Engineer Girl Ambassadors program has it launched in 2018. That's a more recent thing and young women in high school can participate in that by filling out a application on the Engineer Girl website telling us what they would do to get younger girls in their community doing hands-on engineering. Great, thank you. Simo, our next question comes from Mr. Ed Frank. His question is, how many women have been part of the Engineer Girl program? Is the project limited by the available funds or the available candidates? Um, by how many women have been part of Engineer Girl? Uh, gosh, that's hard to say. I would say thousands as far as women engineers that have answered questions for students in the past. Um, right now, we have close to 450 women that are part of the Gallery of Women Engineers. Um, 
as far as the writing contest, we usually have between 500 and 1,000 participants every year. And the writing contest has been going on um, annually since 2003. And as far as the Engineer Girl Ambassadors Program, this is a new program. Uh, we started with six ambassadors in 2018. The following year, we had 16 ambassadors. That was uh, in 2019 to 2020. And this year, we have 23 ambassadors. Our next question comes from Howie Rosen. Howie asks, how is Engineer Girl communicated to middle school and high school students? How many schools participate? Hmm, so it's hard to say exactly how many girls participate as far as in the writing contest. Um, the site itself is promoted through social media. We have a monthly newsletter that goes out to participants. Um, schools will sometimes have all of the students in a particular class participate in the writing contest every year but we don't have a way of tracking that in particular. The site was launched with a girls advisory board that um, reviewed the original site way back in 2000. And then in 2012, uh, we had 135 girls from I believe around 60 some schools that all provided more advice on the website. Um, and then as far as the Engineer Girl Ambassadors Program, all of the girls that have been a part of that are from different schools with different educators that serve as their local sponsors and help with that. Thank you. Quick reminder for our attendees, please feel free to use the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen if you have any questions you'd like to ask Simul. Our next question comes from Arthur Jaffron. Engineer Girl has been in operations for some years now. Has there been follow-up to see what the impact of the program has been on its participant? So Engineer Girl launched in 2001 as purely a resource website. Girls um, would come and visit the site, but we didn't track that. And because they are under the age of 13, um, at least very many of them are, there are rules that keep us from tracking them uh, when they visit the site or participate in our programming. We will often collect an email address when they participate in the writing contest, but we don't keep that beyond the time of the participation. Um, as far as the Engineer Girl Ambassadors Program, yes, we are monitoring that very carefully and all of the girls uh, provide feedback about their experiences and provide a survey and we have been staying in touch with them even as they've gone on to college so far, um, but we only have a couple of years of that data so far. Our next question comes from Jonna Thomas hyphen Roach. Her question is, how is NAE promoting the Engineer Girl program nationally through middle school, high school and various venues? Um, well, I, as I mentioned, you know, we have several uh, social media programs. So we have an Engineer Girl Facebook and an Instagram account, as well as Twitter. Uh, we will create materials for those on a regular basis. And then our uh, monthly newsletter goes out to interested parties on a regular basis. So social media has been a really good way for us to get the message out and to allow others to share what we're doing. Um, as well as just people search for what do girls do in engineering and Engineer Girl often comes up. So we have a lot of visitors to Engineer Girl that are just interested about women in engineering and they find us that way. Our next question is from Al Romick. Do we know how many girls involved in Engineering Girl early on went to study actual engineering at a university? Like I said, that's really hard for us to monitor because of their age. Uh, we, don't, we don't keep in touch with them. Um, we do have uh, some individual accounts. For instance, uh, the young woman in the video, she participated in the writing contest and then got back in touch with us as she's finishing her last year of engineering at the university. And she wrote to say how important and valuable it was for her when she was a young girl. Uh, so we have a lot of individual accounts like that, but we don't have a systemic way to track how many people have participated and then whether they've gone on into engineering. 
Our next question is from Michael Johnson. Do we have partner state engineering organizations working within each state and or the ability to join in this worthwhile effort at their state level? You know, we've been looking honestly for ways to do that with the ambassadors program. We have a lot of volunteers or well, I'd say a lot of partners who help to share our materials. So when the writing contest is launched or when we launch a new announcement about the ambassadors program, they will share that material with their members. Um, any educator or somebody working in a private or I don't mean private, but like in an after school program or a, a outreach program for girls, if they write to us and ask for our bookmarks and stickers and things like that, we will send them as many as they need to share with young girls in their communities. Um, and we are looking really for the ambassadors program for partners who can help us identify young women who maybe need a little extra push to participate in the ambassadors program. Sometimes young women, particularly those from underrepresented groups, they may not feel confident in filling out a application for something like a national program for ambassadors and engineering. And they were looking for adults who can give them that nudge and say, you know what, I think you'd be great for this and I think you should apply and I could even be your sponsor or I know somebody who could do that and be a sponsor for you. Um, so definitely that is one way we'd love for people to get involved. Um, and we're going to do one final question um, from uh, Mr. Mazumdar. Um, is there a summer camp to provide hands-on experience for the engineer girls under the supervision of well-known female engineering leaders? You know, as far as engineer girl, we do not have a summer camp like that, but some of the engineer girl ambassadors have run summer camps in their own communities. So they have created summer programs and brought in engineers and usually for the ambassadors, if they are looking for engineers to help them and to speak at their events, then we can put them in touch because of all of these women engineers who are eager to help support young women and participate in engineer girl programming. So there are those opportunities, although we do not have uh, a national summer camp that we run ourselves. So that was the last question, correct? That is correct. Okay, well, I guess I would like to thank all of you for su your support of this wonderful program. And at this time, I will hand it over to Coralie Brierly. Coralie was elected to the NAE in 1999. She served as NAE counselor and now serves as vice president for development. Thank you, Simmel. NAE's Engineer Girl Program has served as our primary outreach program to address the underrepresentation of women in engineering by connecting girls to role models, sparking their interest in engineering through our writing contest, and deepening that interest through the Ambassadors Program and working on hands-on engineering design projects. While we have made a lot of progress, there's still much to do. The success of Engineer Girl is based on evidence-based research and targeted outreach. Engineers serve an important role in working to change entrenched biases. Our work through Engineer Girl has inspired a new program to expand our outreach to other underrepresented groups to ensure a more diverse voice for engineers of the future. This new program is called Inclusive and Diverse Engineering for All, IDEA for short. It will serve as the umbrella for programs like Engineer Girl. It will provide practical foundations and inspire community activity to broaden inclusion and diversity as well as equitable and entrepreneurial talent development. Through IDEA, NAE proposes to collaborate with businesses, nonprofits and educational leaders around the country in dynamic forms to explore specific steps to engage diverse individuals whose perspectives will enrich innovative possibilities for all. Using a grassroots organizing model, we aim to lift up the work of communities, provide guidance, data evaluation, and facilitate conversation to build lasting partnerships. Through a funding contribution of, from NAE Mark Levin, 
and a member Mark Levin and Becky Levin, founders of the Possible Project, TPP, a nonprofit organization in Boston that uses entrepreneurship as a framework to close the skills and opportunity gaps facing young people with untapped potential. The NAE is launching a program to boldly expand the population of future engineers to include those not typically represented in either the classroom or the workplace. This specific opportunity with TPP will feature a series of annual conferences starting the fall of 2021 in the Boston area to bring together the ideas and entrepreneurial sensibilities of talented young people, decision makers, and businesses to improve the nation's economy, health, prosperity, security, and quality of life. We look forward to sharing more with you about this initiative and others as they develop in the coming months. I want to thank everyone again for joining us, some of you tonight, some of us this afternoon. Uh, without each and every one of you, the NAE could not fulfill its mission. Have a wonderful Sunday evening, and I hope to see many of you tomorrow for the NAE's Forum on Engineering for Pandemics and a special lecture from John Slaughter on racial injustice and lack of equity. Thank you.